All right, what I want to show you here is my Bader B3 with the variable speed, variable frequency drive attachment. The Bader has a three phase, two horsepower motor, 3450 RPM. The belt is 72 inch, has quite a few guards on it, which I like to disregard because basically they kind of get in the way. You'll notice some pluses. We have a nice area of slack belt. We have the glass platen with the two smaller wheels, one on each end. I also have the 8 inch contact wheel, which is kind of a nice feature too because that wheel could be moved left and right depending on how you want to set it up. Because this will be taken off at the time you put on the 8 inch contact wheel. Ooh, the jet just went by. Okay, what I want to show you is how nice this works. Now, this variable frequency drive is a little bit better than regular. It's Chinese naturally, and it's really hard to understand the manual. They did tell me there was a manual online for it, which I did figure out. Uh, when you plug this into the motor and take the belt off and run it with no load, it actually sets all the parameters itself. You don't need to punch in anything like how the motor is, what size, what uh, frequencies, what uh, RPMs, voltage, amperage, the whole works. It figures it all out for you. Then it gets ready to run. Okay, so right now I have this wired into the variable frequency drive and then the variable frequency drive runs on regular 220 uh, single phase power from my workshop in the basement where this is out in the garage okay so what i'm going to do is being back here i am going to turn this to run and you'll hear it start now that is the frequency variable frequency drive starting up it's actually a little machine in there with a fan to keep it cool you can see the zeros on there nothing is uh no frequencies being delivered to the motor. All right, now what I'm going to do is turn this little dial. It's infinitely variable speed. You don't punch in numbers, you just turn the dial. So let's watch this start going. My other video was kind of poor. It got cut down to 39 seconds because I thought I was emailing it. And then in reality, you couldn't actually hear the belt going around. But we'll watch this real slowly. There it goes. See some fuzz go by that way you could tell now that's slow but it's a nice machine kind of an overkill for me uh, I sharpen chisels and I grind my own shapes of chisels for wood turning. Uh, and I do have a couple other belt grinders that aren't quite this big and powerful, but they suit me just fine. If I can't sell this, then I will just keep it because it's not costing me anything to keep. And it uh, does have a lot of features. Now you can see that uh, your belt tension is by that green lever up here at the top. It's a spring that controls that with a number of holes here to adjust where you want that wheel, allowing how much slack belt across the top. I also have a 6-inch contact wheel, and with that, plugs into the same spot right here. Then you adjust your tracking with this knob here, and what you have to do I have that so that I can use some 60 inch belt, which I have quite a few of. That's what I'm normally using, 60 inch belt. This unit here takes 72, but with the smaller wheel and adjusting down the uh, tension bar down there, you can get this to uh, handle 60 inch belt really nice. 
and I put belts on here from uh, one inch to two and a quarter, and they work just fine. Okay, let's go around the side here and just take a look at how this goes. I don't have it permanently attached to this stand. I have a C-clamp to the stand because I had it sitting on a dolly and the stand was somewhere else. And now what else was I going to say? Well, down here you can see this bolt sticking out. Well, it has a hook on the other end of it that sticks out. You can hang all your belts on there if you want to. I have that hooked in underneath. I don't think you could see it. But anyway, this is what this baby looks like. This one looks like on this side, kind of uh, funky. There's that mechanism there, which adjusts the tracking, and then you can tighten it there if you're going to leave it at that. And then there's the pivot bolt right there. Okay, well, I hope this uh, gave us a little more depth and a little more look at what this grinder is. Seems most people like the variable speed. I didn't worry too much about it until I tried it, and I said, hmm, now I know what you're talking about. Okay, so let's turn her up. Now that baby's really going now. One of the nice experts, uh, Eckert, I think his name is, I consider him one of the best there is, or was, and still is. If you watch that man work, <laughs> He uses uh, 36 grit sometimes and 40 grit and sometimes up to 7,000 feet per minute. That guy could make a knife with his eyes closed like that, but that's a master, let me tell you. But anyway, this is the kind of grinder you'll see on like forged and steel, and you'll see a lot of the pro knife makers using this machine. Alright, so I guess all I need to say right now. I'm going to make another video of my converted Kalamazoo, 2x48 inch Kalamazoo that I have, that can also handle up to 60 inch belts, also have a flat wheel and a flattened. They are not variable speed, but uh, they work really great for my uh, sharpening. Alright, thanks guys, talk to you later.